if I asked you why Pierre Polyev is doing so much better than anyone on the liberal team right now, there are a number of obvious reasons you could throw my way. Like, the liberals are going on 10 years and people are fatigued. Liberal policies aren't working out. Trudeau is a true douche. And you'd be right by giving any or all of these answers. But one of the key reasons Polyev is bringing home the bacon while the liberals cry themselves to sleep at night can be attributed to a factor the liberals couldn't begin to understand even if they tried. Simply put, Pierre can connect with people. He can relate with blue collars and white collars alike. He makes an effort to understand where individuals are coming from, and that is one of the many components that make up his success. Also, when campaigning, he welcomes liberal voters to talk to him. He won't try and sell them, he'll just talk to them. Liberals, on the other hand, are living up quite miserably to that stigma of them being the party of elitists. Lately, it's becoming even more evident. We all saw what happened with Jennifer Connelly's now infamous boo-hoo get over it comment in light of revelations that there are traitors in the House of Commons. I'll put a link to the Connolly compilation I made a few weeks ago in the comments, but check out this exchange between her and Leslyn Lewis. I'm just curious if she thinks there should be consequences or... Uh or retromand for members of this house who meet with known Nazis who spread uh, misinformation, disinformation, glorify the Holocaust, who speak against uh, uh, anti-Muslim rhetoric. Uh, I'm just curious if she's talking about online hate and privacy of Canadians and regulation. Does she condemn her actions by meeting with a known Nazi uh, in this country who spout anti-Muslim rhetoric? The Prime Minister has put on blackface so many times. He has degraded black people. He literally put a banana in his pants. And you have the audacity, you have the audacity to stand and look at me as a black woman and ask about my meeting with another member of the European Parliament. That is within my job description. I do not have to, I do not have to approve of everything that another member believes in in order to have the decency to have meetings with with other individuals. Your prime minister, this prime minister, denigrated black men by putting a banana in his pants. Shame on every member over there that does not chastise them. If this were any other country, he would not be leading and he would not have the moral authority to lead. He would not have that moral authority. Order. Damn. And then we have Christian Freeland, who is quite likely the most unlikable of all the liberals on the roster. Still, you'd think she'd have better sense than to commit this faux pas. That is Leslie's vision. That's the liberal vision. That's why I'm really calling on the people of St. Paul's to go out there and vote for her. Because the alternative is really cold and cruel and small. The alternative is cuts and austerity, not believing in ourselves as a country, not believing in our communities and in our neighbors. Now, while Jennifer O'Connelly's boohoo was indeed misplaced, at least we could say that it was not a direct message against a segment of the population. It was more a reflection of the defensive stance the Liberal Party is taking to shield itself from the inevitable. But for Freeland to openly backhand conservative voters across the chops with a comment like that one? Well, it shows they are a party of out-of-touch elitists who know they're going nowhere past 2025 and now they're lashing out at the filthy plebs they deem responsible for their coming demise. And I can assure you right now, you will be seeing footage of Freeland's words replayed in future conservative election ads. And why not? If your opponents insist on gifting you with free ammunition, it'd be a little silly to ignore it. And now we have one of the reigning lords of the liberal elitists, Mark Lurch Adams Miller. I'm really perplexed, honestly, as to how Miller and Trudeau can be best friends. Trudeau is somewhat light in spirit, a little more playful, while Miller always looks like he's got this rank pickle planted firmly up that ginger butt of his. When he does smile, it's like the supreme beings controlling him suddenly remember they have to convince us he's a real human, and they suddenly push a button to give us that grin of chiclets. And when Miller does have a giggle, or a smile, it's always at the strangest moments. 
Like, there's no reason to be laughing or smiling. Kind of like Arthur Fleck in A Joker, who's laughing at everything that comedian says except for the actual jokes. Here's what Miller really thinks of conservative voters. And my question is, why then? Well, I think he's the best place to, 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 to beat Pierre Polyev, who, uh, as I've said publicly, is a fake. Uh, he doesn't present any concrete vision of Canada that, that I support. It's a guy full of slogans. Uh, most people don't really know what they mean. They, they, they may be catchy, but he reminds me of a, of a wrestling manager from the 80s just yelling <laughs> slogans with the heel and everyone likes to boo or to cheer. I mean, this is just, I don't know how this is, why this has become the state of Canadian politics, uh, but that's the reality of, of what I see. Um, it's not a WWF match. This is a reality. Canadians are suffering and we need to fight for them. So, um, Prime Minister has a vision. We are a government that's eight or nine years old. I understand people can get tired of the government in place, lots, of, lots has happened. Whether uh, people are right or wrong, they do blame the government for a number of things that are going on. Uh, isn't a question of blaming, but that's the reality that people are feeling. We got a message that was loud and clear from Toronto St. Paul's that was uh, what was considered a quote unquote safe riding. We should absolutely never take anything for granted as a government. And we need to listen to the people that voted in the way they voted, uh, screw our heads on better and then move on. Well, you know what? I personally feel there's nothing wrong with wrestling or the fans who love wrestling. But the way Miller is dropping that one sounds like he has nothing but disdain for wrestling fans and that he thinks the only people who are dumb enough to fall for Polyev's populism are dumb hicks who wear stone cold t-shirts to weddings. All three of these examples are clear indicator of what is a collective sentiment within the Liberal Party. That sentiment being that conservative voters are low-grade, underachieving pieces of trailer park trash. That's why they don't care about the housing crisis. That's why they don't care about food inflation. They figure the people most affected by it are dumb hillbilly plebes who live in blue rural writings. Well, Toronto St. Paul's isn't poor, and it sure as hell isn't the sticks either. We owe it to ourselves and other voters in the future to remind them of the contemptuous view liberals have of their opponents. Sound off in the comments. Thank you very much for watching, and please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already.